Imagine if every thought that you had could be a stepping stone towards your success rather than a hurdle. What if I told you that the key to unlocking this mindset is already inside of you? This episode is for you if you find yourself often stuck in a cycle of negative thoughts, or if you're looking for ways to be more present and positive in your daily life, or if you're aiming to achieve personal professional growth through focused action and clarity. Stay tuned because today, you and I are gonna dig into the practical mindfulness techniques that can rewrite your brain for positivity. Did you know that our brains are naturally wired to remember negative experiences more than positive ones? This is called negativity bias. But here's a question. Can we retrain our brains to focus more on positivity? Well, today we're gonna, we're gonna explore how to rewrite our brains for positivity through practical mindfulness techniques. Here's a quote that I believe really resonates with our discussion today. Walt Whitman is credited as stating, keep your face always towards the sunshine and shadows will fall behind you. This quote really captures the essence of positivity and the power of directing your focus towards the light, allowing the darkness to fall away. Let this be a powerful reminder as we journey through personal and professional. Let's go ahead and get into understanding mindfulness. What is this mindfulness? Mindfulness is the quality of being present and fully engaged in whatever we're doing at the moment, free from distraction or judgment and aware of our thoughts and feelings, but without getting caught up in them. It's kind of like having a superpower where you can be completely in the moment, totally immersed in whatever you're doing. Imagine that you're sipping your morning coffee and instead of your mind racing through your to-do list, you're just there, tasting the coffee, feeling the warmth of the cup in your hands, and maybe even noticing the sunlight streaming through the window. It's being fully present and engaged without letting your thoughts drift into the past or the future. Or imagine you're in a meeting at work. Mindfulness means you're fully listening, not just planning on what you're gonna say next or judging the ideas as they come up. It's about being open and receptive, which surprisingly can lead to more creativity and effective solutions. The beauty of mindfulness is that it's not just for big moments in life. It's for the everyday ordinary moments, like washing dishes, talking with a friend, or even waiting in line. It's in these moments that being mindful can transform the mundane into something special, something alive and rich with detail. Practicing mindfulness isn't about perfection or never having a distracted moment. We're human after all. It's about recognizing when our minds have wandered and, and gently bringing the, the attention back to the present. It's this gentle redirection that builds our mindfulness muscle, making it easier over time to dwell in the present moment, free from distraction and judgment. When we talk about mindfulness, it's not some abstract concept or just a, a meditation practice. It's a way of living, a way of being in the world that makes life richer, fuller, and more vibrant. It's about truly experiencing life as it unfolds, moment by moment. Now that we've explored the essence of mindfulness and how it enriches our daily experiences, let's, let's shift gears. I'm going to guide you through some actual steps that you can start today. These steps are designed to not only deepen your understanding of mindfulness, but to integrate it into your life, making this powerful practice a tangible part of your everyday routine. Let's go ahead and get into the actionable steps. I actually have two for you. Actionable step number one is mindful exercise. Begin incorporating mindfulness into physical activities that you enjoy. And this could be lifting weights, which is my favorite, at the gym or going for a run or practicing yoga. Focus on your breathing, the sensation of your muscles contracting and relaxing, and the rhythm of your movements. Notice the detail, grip of your hands, the strength, the ground beneath your feet, and the way that your body feels during and after the exercise. Number two is mindful eating. Choose one meal a day to eat mindfully. This means eating without distractions like TV or smartphones. Pay attention to the taste, the texture, and the smell of your food. Chew slowly and appreciate each bite, acknowledging the nourishment that it provides. All right, so now I have some coaching questions for you. After you finish with those two actual steps, ask yourself these questions. 
What did you notice about your mental state before and after incorporating mindfulness into your exercise? What differences did you observe in your eating experience when you ate mindfully compared to your usual meals? All right, let's get into number two, which is breaking the cycle of negative thoughts. You know how sometimes, even without realizing it, we find ourselves stuck in a loop of negative thoughts. It's like our brain has this default setting to focus on what's wrong, what could go wrong, or what went wrong in the past. This isn't just you, it's actually how our brains are wired. They're like pattern-making machines, always looking for threats to keep us safe, which is why we often default to negative thinking. But here's the kicker. Just because our brains have this default setting, it doesn't mean that we're stuck. Breaking this cycle of negative thoughts requires a bit of conscious effort, but it's totally doable. Let me explain how. First off, it's about becoming aware of these negative thought patterns. Imagine that you're having a rough day at work and suddenly you're thinking, I'm terrible at my job. I'm gonna get fired. That's your cue. Instead of letting that thought spiral out of control, you pause and ask yourself, is this really true? Have I received feedback to support this or am I jumping to conclusions? This is where you start to challenge these negative thoughts. It's like being a detective examining the evidence. Maybe you realize, wait, I've actually received a lot of positive feedback on my projects. I'm just having an off day. This process of questioning and challenging your thoughts helps break the cycle by providing a more balanced perspective. Another strategy is to consciously shift your focus to the positive. It's not about ignoring the negatives or pretending that everything is perfect, but about balancing your viewpoint. For example, if you're stressing about a presentation, instead of thinking, I'm gonna mess this up, you remind yourself, I've prepared thoroughly and I know my stuff. It's an opportunity to, to share what I know with people who probably really need to hear what I have to say. So that, this, right, all of that doesn't just change your thought pattern, it changes your emotional state, making you feel more confident and less anxious. Visualization is another powerful tool. Visualize yourself successfully navigating situations that usually trigger negative thoughts. If you're worried about social gatherings, imagine yourself mingling, laughing, having a good time. This mental rehearsal can positively influence your actual experience. Breaking the cycle of negative thoughts isn't about overnight transformation. It's a practice, a series of conscious efforts that gradually rewire your brain. The more you practice, the more you'll notice moments of choice where you can either fall into old patterns or choose new, more positive direction. And the beauty of it, each time you choose posit positivity, you're strengthening those neural pathways in your brain, making it easier to choose positivity the next time around. So next time you catch yourself in a negative thought loop, remember, you have the tools to break the cycle. Now that we've unpacked the dynamics behind the cycle of negative thoughts and understood that it's within our power to challenge and change them, let's move towards action. I'll guide you through some practical, actionable steps that can help you break free from this cycle, transforming your thought patterns into ones that support and uplift you. Ready to make the change? All right, here we go. Actionable step number one, identify negative thought patterns and challenge them the evidence. Number two is replace negative thoughts with positive affirmations. All right, so after you do that and you implement those actionable steps, I have a couple coaching questions for you. What negative thought patterns did, did you notice? How can you reframe those thoughts positively? All right, let's go ahead and move into topic area number three, which is cultivating positivity through mindfulness. Now, mindfulness allows us to experience life more fully. Talked about that a little earlier, right? And allows us to appreciate the present moment and cultivate a sense of peace and positivity. Imagine that you're living your life like you're behind the wheel of a car, but instead of looking through the windshield, you're constantly checking the rear view mirror or trying to gaze far down the road. That's how many of us go through life. We're either ruminating about the past or worried about the future. 
Mindfulness, though, it's about focusing on the road right in front of us, appreciating the scenery and navigating our path with attention and care. Cultivating positivity through mindfulness starts with this simple yet profound shift in focus. It's about bringing our attention back to the present moment, to the here and now, and really experiencing it. Let's say that you're having a tough day. Everything seems to go wrong and your mind is a whirlpool of negative thoughts. Here's where a mindfulness comes in. You pause, you take a deep breath, and you focus on that breath. Feel the air entering your lungs, the slight pause before you exhale, and the sensation of the breath leaving your body. This act of focusing on your breath brings you back to the present moment, cutting through the negativity and allowing you to reset. Now, let's talk about how to cultivate positivity. One powerful method is through a gratitude practice. Each day, take a moment to think about three things that you're grateful for. I do this every single day. And I mean, really think about them. Feel the gratitude. It could be as simple as a warm cup of coffee or, or a great message from a friend or the comfort of your bed at the end of the day. This practice shifts your focus from what's lacking or negative to what's abundant and positive in your life. Another method is to engage in activities that bring you joy and do them mindfully. Whether it's gardening or painting or, or playing an instrument or cooking your favorite meal. Or like I said, I like to work out. So immerse your, whatever it is, immerse yourself fully and notice the colors and the sounds and the textures and the sensations. This not only amplifies the positive experience, but also reinforces your ability to be present. Mindfulness also teaches us to approach our thoughts and feelings with curiosity instead of judgment. When a negative thought arises, instead of getting caught up in it or criticizing yourself for having it, you simply observe it. You might think, isn't that interesting that I'm having this thought? This detached curiosity allows you to understand your thought patterns better without being overwhelmed by them, which, and it helps you open up for space for more positive thinking. Additionally, practicing mindfulness and interactions with others can significantly boost positivity. When you listen actively and you're fully present in conversations and you give your undivided attention to the person you're with, this not only enriches your relationships, but also fosters a deeper connection and understanding, contributing to a more positive outlook on life. Cultivating positivity isn't about denying or ignoring the negative aspects of life. Instead, it's about choosing where to direct your focus, your energy and attention. By practicing mindfulness, you learn to appreciate the beauty of the present moment. And it helps you cultivate gratitude and engage deeply with the world around you. These practices over time build a foundation of positivity that can transform your outlook on life, making each moment richer and more fulfilling. Now that we've explored how mindfulness can open the door to a more positive, fulfilling experience of life, let's take that understanding and put it into practice. I'm gonna share with you some actionable steps that will help you cultivate this sense of positivity in your daily life through mindfulness. These steps are designed to be practical and straightforward so that you can easily integrate them into your routine and start seeing the benefits right away. Ready to make a positive shift? All right, actionable step number one, engage in a mindfulness activity daily, like mindful walking or eating or exercise. Number two is create a mindfulness reminder in your environment. And now, of course, I have some coaching questions for you. So after you do those actionable steps, how did mindfulness change your perception of daily activities? What feelings arose during your mindfulness practice? Wrapping up, remember that rewiring your brain for positivity is a journey. It doesn't happen overnight, but with consistent practice of these practical mindfulness techniques, you'll find yourself moving closer to a mindset that empowers and supports your personal and professional growth. If the, today's episode resonated with you, I encourage you to click the links in the description. One, to join the Unstoppable Email community is free 
You'll get an uplifting email from me once a week that will encourage you for the whole week. Or if you need something a little deeper, you can do that too, but also explore coaching with me. Together, you and I can unlock your full potential. Until next time, keep finding your path.